Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem, New York, it's the Ramble, and I'm Alex, and we'll be here until midnight tonight. Down we go to Florida, and the lovely and attractive, and uh, sunbaked. You have a nice color in your face and all of that for living in Florida. Yes, I'm in Florida, but here I'm so habitual about using sunscreen, like 75, because you see a lot of wrinklage down here. You do. And a lot of bad plastic surgeries, too. But I guess that goes in with the wrinklage. But, uh, yeah, down, you know, when I got a lot of it was when I, we were on our last trip. And in Spain, you get, or in, you know, South America, you get all kinds of coats. Just, well, I found that whenever I went to Spain, I loved getting a tan because the color you get in that part of the world is much nicer than anywhere else. It is. It's like a you golden know. kind of, a, it just looks different. Like yeah. I use sunscreen 30. Wow. I got crazy when I was in South America, but still got a nice, it just looks like you would probably look in 40 years if you lived there for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, but in yeah, Spain, in Spain, I, I mean, you remember we went to Spain together. We sat out in the we sun. Did. You remember I came back one night. I, had, I was so sunburned. I, I was, I, I don't think it was when I was with you there. Yes, it was. It was, you and had we had to call it. I had sunstroke. Yeah, and yeah. we had to call the doctor. I was very. I, I had my arm went numb and everything. It, it's like having a real stroke. But you do remember yeah. that, yeah. Oh, I totally remember because I was concerned for you because I'm, I don't know if I displayed it, but in my mind, bells are going off because, see, in my family, we didn't go to the doctor or to the emergency room, rather, unless we had an arm dangling, you know, from our rotator cuff. Right. Um, it was, but so it was like, okay, this is bad enough. He's going to a doctor. And so I just want to make sure that, you know, do you need water? That's what people always say. That's the first thing. When somebody gets their arm chopped off. Would, would you, you like, like some water? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yes, that's going to make me feel tons yeah, better. It makes you it, morphine. It, it, you suddenly uh, grow a, a new limb. You know? Yeah. <laughs> now, why is it nature made it so certain animals can lose part of their anatomy and it grows uh -huh. back? I have no idea. But we can't. But we can't. Yeah. We go, uh, and certain organs are becoming vestigial ones now. Like people are being born without appendixes, reportedly, you know, because what did they do? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I remember when I was a kid, we lived in Marin County and we lived up mm -hmm. on a hill uh, and uh, it was a lot of, a lot of critters up there, you know, and Very, there were wow. a lot of lizards. We had a lot of little lizards, right? Yeah. And if you tried to catch them by grabbing them by the tail, they detached their, deta their tail. How crafty! Yeah, they just detached their tail, that. and then in a couple of months or weeks or whatever, their tail grew back. Yeah. All right. I should remember that in my single year. So now just we had a cat who loved trying to chase the lizards, and would grab them by the tail, and then they would detach. And all over the back of the house were nothing but lizard tails all over the place because the cat kept trying to, and the cat never learned don't catch him by the tail catch him by no some, no yeah you get uh, you get butt kids but yeah that but why human somewhere. beings don't have that is beyond me you know why well, if my liver goes bad i don't grow grow a new liver well you can do that kind of if you take milk thistle i've done a lot of research on it what? because i milk have thistle second. Milk thistle supposedly your liver can you can't grow a whole new one, but you can regenerate it. And milk thistle helps. Yeah, I got it in my Christmas stocking this year. We're part of my Christmas stocking because I'm milk so milk thistle. Fickle. Milk thistle, yes. Yes. And yes, I, it's milk thistle. Yes, my little sister Susie. Uh, but the yeah the, the consumption of it, I take it three times a day, which mm -hmm. is probably more because when you read that something is going to cure this or cure that you immediately go overboard and get a whole new ailment from mm -hmm. you know your overdose of what it was 
what was going to prevent you from having this other uh, ailment. Mm -hmm. And so I, I take it pretty religiously. I mean, I take it on trips on while I'm on trips as well. Right. That's usually the, the indicator of it. It's a medication that you see the value in. Yeah. Take it on I'm trying trip. to think there are certain, there are certain things that are good, really good to take. And even doctors will tell you they're good to take, but I never heard of milk thistle, thistle. Thistle. Milk thith. Hey, try the thith. I don't know why they don't do a fun ad campaign unless people with lists. Because no announcer can say milk thistle. <laughs> it's a tricky one because we're used to correcting that you know, just automatically in our head. And then when you have to say thistle, yeah. well, then. But anyway, so, so you remember me with my sunburn. That was horrible. It was terrible. It was bad, yeah. And then, I, I then at night, that night I sweated a lot and I sweated yeah. it out. And the next day I had a beautiful tan. You know, because mm -hmm. we, we went to the beach every day and we laid out every there day. and uh, I didn't use sunscreen. I didn't believe in sunscreen. I was there to get a tan. OK. Yeah. And I went back. I, I had pictures of it. I went back. I was really tanned. You know, you, you were. Yes, you were a bronze Adonis. And yeah. yeah, you get a good tan in in those countries. Yeah. But I got a good one in Rio, and then also when we went to Buenos Aires. But the 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 Ava Peron Museum that I picture I sent you yeah. in Buenos Aires. It was we went to the museum and then we went to the cemetery. A lot of dead people. And then uh, there are a lot of dead people in cemeteries. I know. I should have warned you about that. <laughs> but the uh, the, the museum in Buenos Aires was great. It was small. It was one of the former uh, homes that she had built for do, mothers, do single mothers. Do they still revere her down there? They still seem to. Or they sure making some ka bucks on her iconography. Why is it? I don't understand this. Why is it that we as people tend to go for, for people who are no good? You know? <laughs> That yeah. robbing the country blind or whatever, you know. I mean, right now we have Donald Trump back in the seat again. I'm going, who the <laughs> hell? You know, I wouldn't even let that guy come over for dinner. Or if I did, I'd hide the silverware. Yeah, wouldn't even let him watch your cat. But yeah. the, uh, now, if people say I'm wrong because they're more, I guess, uh, acquainted with the inner workings of the Republican Party. But I thought that Nikki Haley, if they put Trump and Haley together, now, because Haley, I can I like kind of in spite of some of her views, uh, the fact that she's a woman of color, and she just yeah. Has, they say I, she's I a woman of color, like, but I'm still trying to see the color. Yeah, well, she's isn't she Middle Eastern? She has she's Middle, Middle Eastern, Eastern yeah, but she, she she keeps referring to herself as a person of color, and she's you know really to the eye she's not. Well, supposedly William Marcy Tweed was it ran in black neighborhoods before there was visual media as a black guy and he would he would have his uh, his representatives go into the black churches in harlem mm -hmm. and talk about this great guy boss tweed and uh, boss was, tweed yeah and he was uh you know he was certainly not black but before visual mediums proving the opposite all right yeah i'll vote for him yeah yeah so I mean, I mean but i i don't uh, um uh, you know um i just don't understand why people uh, what the what the uh, i see people being interviewed and they go we well, don't care about the 91 indictments that's all fake i don't get it I hey listen it. you know folks we lived in new york city with uh, uh trump for years and we know what he was all about you know he was a, he was a joke you know? Yeah, uh, he put his name on everything in big gold letters, and I mean, it was just disgusting. Anyway, we we hated him, and but we didn't have to vote for him, and he wasn't our president. But all of a sudden, right. one day he was our president, and he was a terrible He's, president. He was he didn't do anything. People go, oh, and he made the uh, the economy was better. No, but it wasn't as good as it was with Obama. You know, it just got worse. But now it looks like it was better because it's not good under Biden. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's. But no, it wasn't right. better under under him. The only thing he did was give tax breaks to the very rich, and that was about mm -hmm. it. You know. Yeah, I don't get how people can look how men with daughters after hearing that comment that he made about 
their pussy and they're just throwing it at you and you, you don't even have to well, ask for it. There was an article in the Times today about yeah. has America gotten amnesia where Trump is concerned? It seems a it total seems amnesia. I mean, people who yeah. defend him to the hilt and they go, he's just the most, he was the best president we ever had. No, he doesn't even come close. <laughs> in fact, they, they went out and got historians to rank the best pre the presidents in order of how good they were. He's uh -huh. the, he's number, f the last dead, one. He's, you know. Dead fast. He, and I lowest. think, you know, it goes back to the American celebration of wealth and celebrity. We like famous people with a lot of money, hence the Kardashians. <laughs> what else have they done? You know, well, I mean, the point is, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the problem we've got is is a problem with uh, uh, people kind of looking on this as a reality show, not yes. as a presidential race. And, right. You know, and he was he had a reality show, so he had to be good. No, 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 and. And and that's it though. See, he had that familiarity. He was on TV. People. He he kept, he kept telling people when he was running for president. Excuse me if I'm interrupting you. Because uh, <laughs> if if I don't, you'll just keep going. So anyway, <laughs> now, anyway, uh, but uh, uh, he. Um, he keep kept saying how I was the most the most popular TV show, you know, eight seasons running or something like that. No, he didn't. That show was only number one in the first year. Every yeah. other year, it kept going down and down and down so badly that I was at a dinner one night or a party one night with my good friend Gilbert Gottfried, who's another <laughs> one another one who's no longer with us, folks. You know, if you live long enough, everybody around you drops dead. Okay. Right, and it's left to you to deal with the dread. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 anyway, so he was um, uh, uh, he 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 was on The Apprentice that year. Oh God, was. And I said, uh -huh. so uh, how how'd you enjoy being on The Apprentice? He says, I can't remember. We did that two years ago. Well, really? It turned out the, the show was doing so badly that they didn't even broadcast their last season until they needed a clutch replacement <laughs> yeah. in the schedule. There was like a, you know, a dead spot in the schedule. And they said, well, we can get rid of these old, uh, the non-broadcast year of, of, uh, yeah. of, of uh, The Apprentice. And so- Yeah, we'll dredge the TV And he said, I did, that, I did that a couple of years ago. He said, they just didn't broadcast it until now. Yeah, I don't get the whole political scene. To me, it's like a, a Monty Python satire. It is. Well, you know something? It's made us the laughing stock of the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, and I wonder if it's just another indicator of America going down, down, down in world, world prominence. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, um, uh, we're not the only one that makes mistakes. I mean, Boris Johnson over in England was a big mistake, you know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And we made fun of him. But now we don't make fun of the new guy, and Britain's okay. But I mean, Donald Trump, uh, Americans, uh, foreign countries have nothing but disdain for us for even thinking about having this guy as another president. You know? Yeah, I, I it boggles my mind on a daily basis. But yeah. you know, but I think that we're such a late night talk show mentality. Mm -hmm. He gives us something to make make fun of. And you know, he's like, isn't that fun? What Kim, do you hear what Trump well, said? Th this was the problem. All these people like Colbert <clears throat> and uh, Kimmel. I'll put him mm -hmm. in there, although I like Bow. Kimmel. Can't stand Colbert, but I love Kimmel. Uh, are all going after Trump on their in their monologues every night, and all mm -hmm. they're doing is helping him get reelected. Oh yeah, because and the same thing over at MSNBC. There doesn't there isn't an hour in the last half a year where there hasn't been a story about Donald Trump, and mm -hmm. sometimes the whole hour is taken up with Donald Trump. And they didn't realize yeah. that in 12, 2016, they're the ones who got him reelected. He didn't have to buy any advertising because he's a known commodity. Yeah, that yeah. Trump is. So that's why he's. He's ever present. You know, the, a, a, a day can go by and I don't hear a thing about Biden. That's the way it At should. All. That's the way it should be. 
yeah, people just doing their jobs, putting their heads yeah. down and doing their jobs. Yeah. Usually if a president doesn't make headlines, it means he has learned to work well with the Congress. Well, I often felt, they say, who's the greatest president we've ever had? And I said, uh, probably Chester A. Arthur. <laughs> And then they go, well, why Chester A. Arthur? And I say, well, do you know anything about him? They went, no. I said, anything go on while he was in office that you know about? No. Well, then he's probably the best president of the United States because he just was doing his job. No controversy, no woes, no... um, Yeah, yeah. no misadventures. No misadventures. (laughs) You know, meanwhile, here we got a guy running for president who has 91 counts against him, criminal counts against him, uh, has been found guilty of malfeasance in running his companies in New York and was fined almost a half a billion dollars. I mean, and, and uh, by, by the way, was found guilty of rape in a trial in New York with Eugene Carroll. And People this is the kind it. of person you want as your president? Yeah, I, hey, I don't. Let's elect that. President Rapist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what. Uh, like I say, it boggles my mind. I don't even talk politics down in Florida, because I wouldn't get anywhere. I don't believe in arguing my points, and I just don't want to ruffle feathers. If someone's a tr- crazy about Trump, I I may never understand why. I don't. I don't, but, un- I don't understand evangelicals being for him. I mean, here's a guy oh. who raped somebody who cheated on his wife any number of times. It's documented. Yeah. You know. And, that, and that's just half of the Southern Baptist Convention. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't understand how they can how they can back somebody like that. He doesn't have the moral turpitude to be president, you know? Uh, yeah, and and yet he gets away with because he's a cartoon character. Do yeah. we not remember that in the mid '90s he was doing Burger King commercials with Snoop Dogg? I mean, but it's just that's what got him in a little taste of that limelight, that yep. Burger King limelight, and uh, he decided, you know, I like this. I like this being in the spotlight. Who gets the most spotlight of anyone in the United States? The president. Oh, if if you wanted to make Donald Trump go away, just don't talk about him. Yeah, exactly. Don't talk about him. He disappears. He's like, he's like, uh, what was it, Beetlejuice? Say his name three times, he'll appear. But if you don't uh-huh. mention him, he doesn't appear. Yeah. And and Do that's you... the best way. I mean, if I were MSNBC, I'd say we're not going to report anything about Donald Trump unless something really important happens. Wouldn't that be lovely if those people were in charge of the yeah. major news operations? Yeah. I don't. But you know, it's we deserve what we get. Because yeah. of the values that we propagate and and wealth and fame, man, America is just they just. Well, Marjorie, just, Marjorie <laughs> said to me the other day, "I'm sick and tired finally of watching MSNBC or any news operation. I'm tired yeah. of hearing the news." And I went, "Good for you! Finally, you came to my determination." Next thing I know, I go into the bedroom. What you watching? The news. I said, "I thought you were tired of this." Well, I just have to catch up. Yeah, you know, it's that fear of missing out well, that we what, all but have. What, what the news has become is a parlor game. You know, oh, yeah. It's just become it, a, a, like, uh, let's sit around, play Canasta, and watch the, watch MSNBC. Well, and do you two talk, like, and respond to what's on the, what's on the screen if you're in a room together watching it? Because I love that when people do that. Oh, I, you know, when my... I have to chastise Marjorie for that. She'll see Mitch McConnell say something, and they go, she'll yell at the screen, shut up, you asshole. And yeah, I'm going, see, I do that. Marjorie, he can't hear <laughs> you. Say... He can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. She said, well, it and makes I... me feel good. And I like it when I'm watching a movie at night, you know, and we're on, we're just like chilling on the couch in the TV room, mm-hmm. <laughs> at the appliance you know, a room named after an appliance. Mm-hmm. We don't call the kitchen a microwave room. And no, so, we really don't. Or the oven right. room. The oven room. It should be the oven and refrigerator yeah, room. Exactly. But, um, you know, I like it when people banter back and forth. When I got a couple of my friends in the room and we're watching TV, I like the banter better than I like the mo- the oh, chosen fare in many cases. By the way, to show you how old I am, I remember when it was called the radio room. Really? <laughs> <laughs> 
I sometimes we call would, it uh, folks, we would sit around. Some people have these cathedral radios. I often wanted to buy one. Those big, you know, the ones that sat on the floor and they were tall and big. I, I had one. It still got WGN. I bought it at an estate sale when I was like sixteen, and they would have these big estate sales in the country oh, man, where those, they those cathedral are, radios were incredible. Oh, and the tubes would light up. And it was magic. Well, I yeah. as, uh, somebody bought me for my birthday a little little cathedral radio, a little uh, yeah. you know, kind of. It looked yeah. like uh, looked like something being a church, actually. You know. Yeah. And um, I said, "Wow, thank you," because I really loved it. You know, I love radio. I love everything about radio. So I um, got this, and I turned it on. I went click, and I went. Uh, problem is, doesn't work. Then I forgot you had to wait 45 seconds for the tubes to warm up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I had forgotten that nothing was instant on. Uh, they weren't instant on. They took 45 mm-hmm. seconds before you heard yeah. it, and the sound slowly came in. Well, that was like NBC uh, and uh, color. Yeah. But they had a phrase, um, The what is it? The color comes on before the sound goes on or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. When you would tune into the Peacock. Now, this was in the late 60s, early 70s, when I was not a, a Bambino. Well, they still had but, tube TV sets. Yeah, the name comes on before the... I can't remember how the phrase went, but it was kind of neat. And what it did was advertise the new technology and make it their personal coup. Yeah, and well, it was, I'm, but the, it was it, fun. TV was slow to come on, too. It took a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so folks, everything's so instant today because there's no tubes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. but I, I tell you about the Christmas tree. Uh, I had a boyfriend, an old boyfriend that was in TV broadcasting. So he had a lot of little antique things. And we made a Christmas tree and the ornaments were old tubes or old of uh, varying sizes. And you, we figured out a way to put the hook on the tube, on the little tube, and had a Christmas tree full of those. It oh, was wow. Well, and it looked like I, well, I remember light. when your radio didn't, all of a sudden you're listening to it and it's really bad. Uh, you're, and all of a sudden your radio goes out and you go, oh, and you open up the back and you looked in there. And if one tube wasn't lit up, that was the culprit. That was it. So you grab the tube and you went down to a store like Radio Shack. Of that it wasn't era. even Radio yeah. Shack. Hardware stores had them. Ace Hardware. Right. Ace is and the you place. would take the tube and you say, I need one of these. And they go over and they'd look. Oh, yeah, that's an A47 or something. They give you the tube. You go home, you put the tube in. You fixed your radio. Yay. Woo. And But I just think they're beautiful to look at. I just think the craftsmanship and the clear glass and it just to me, it's. Well, I radios, love radios in the 50s became streamlined. And they were smaller. That? They fit on a tabletop. And yeah. they were streamlined, and he lost all that. I mean, the wood that went in, they, it's, these things were wood. They yeah, were car- the cabinet. Carved oh, wood. Stand- a beautiful cabinet. The cabinet was still in good shape. It was about 40 year, 30 years old when I got yeah. a hold of it, so this would have been the 70s. And uh, it just the, everything about those old floor-sitting ones was gorgeous. I mean, the woodwork, the carpentry, the design. And TV sets, great. when they came out, though, they they had a certain furniture look to them, but they didn't have that same magic that radios no. had. No, because no, yeah. those radios, you could actually look behind the cur- curtain on those old radios, step inside the back and kind of see how it works. You know, and like you mentioned, if you your radio went out, you opened the back and you saw which one had gone which bad. Which tube had gone bad. Yeah, yeah, there was kind of a, I don't know, I just think a real But anyway, I forgot it. about that uh, when I got my, when somebody brought me a radio, an old radio, that I had to, you have to wait for it to warm up. Uh-huh. You know? Wait for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And by the way, those radios, if you fix them, will still pick up radio stations. Oh, they will, because yeah. this one, like I say. And hurry up, as gotta... long, there may not be radio stations around any longer. <laughs> But we had gotten it at one. These were a blast during the summer months. My friend Tag and I used to go to these estate sales all the time. It was usually some widow in her 90s in a big farmhouse in the country. And they they bring snacks and uh, like, you know, there'd be a concession thing. And they'd last all day. 
and you could get that. Well, I got my old big radio at one, and uh, it was it could get WGN. I brought it home, plunked it in my bedroom, plugged it in, WGN. and it 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 did that light up staticky. You could almost you know feel it, and uh, there it was. So it was still working at least with the clear channels. Yeah. Well, hey, listen. It looks like we're slowly running out of time here. Uh, for this okay. little gathering, but we got to talk about our favorite subject, radio and suntans. Yes, those are our two and big And that topics, was the night, by the way, that Lori and I slept together. But that's another story <laughs> altogether. Everybody who ever wanted to know if we ever slept with each other, yes, we did sleep with each other. And he had to fight me off yeah. all night. <laughs> did, I, did I snore? <laughs> Not that I recall, okay. unless I was out snoring you. Ladies and Sometimes. gentlemen, that's the lovely and attractive Floridian. Ooh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Lori Thompson. Thank you, Lori. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there she is, Lori Thompson. She's a weekly person here. She is out in, uh, where is she? She's in, uh, uh, well, she's on a cruise, which uh, they started in Portugal, and they're going to, I think, uh, Italy and Spain and so on, and uh, uh, she's going to be back in a couple of weeks, but we recorded a lot of these interviews while she was gone, before she was gone, so uh, we, uh, you know, we're okay. We're, we're good to go with Lori for the next couple of weeks, so let me... You know something, actually, it looks pretty good, but let me turn this on to just give myself a nice good look there. Uh, uh, mm. Well, let me bring some of these people on. we got three people waiting right now, and we will bring them into the, uh, uh, into the uh, thing here. There's uh, Brian, uh, Brian Neary. Let's see here. Brian Neary. Uh, <laughs> Brian Neary and there's uh, there's our old friend uh, Charlie Wallace and with only from his nose up uh, we have uh, uh, Kilroy was here yeah Jeff <laughs> Jeff let's see you. there we go oh. the other way I trying to remember when I was a kid they, Kilroy was here was everywhere it was like it was just a nose right and a line. No, it was the nose. The nose went over the edge, I think. And yeah. Said, Kilroy was here. Who the hell was Kilroy? That's the one I never was able to figure out. So, anyway, hello everybody. How are you this evening? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, this is our uh, Marjorie and I had our twelfth uh, wedding anniversary today. Yep. So, so anyway, Marjorie. She's getting so loopy lately. She um, she said, let's go to this restaurant that we really liked. And I know the restaurant she was talking about. And uh, she said, we'll go there. Okay. So she makes arrangements to go there. And she writes down the address. Okay. So she's got the... Well, it turns out it isn't the restaurant she wanted us to go to. This turned out to be another restaurant we had gone to that we didn't like quite so much. So we spent our anniversary dinner uh, uh, spending a great deal of money eating at a restaurant we couldn't stand. So that was my evening this evening. Plus, I've been tired all day. I don't know what it is. I'm just sleepy. So it's the leukemia, I'm sure. Everything is the leukemia now. I've, I've, I've uh, uh, written it out, to every, everything to the leukemia now. So I can't take out the garbage, dear. I've got the leukemia. You know, so anyway, so we we had a uh, we had a night. it was a nice dinner, but she kept saying to me, "This is our twelfth." Well, yeah, it's our twelfth. Five minutes later, this is our twelfth. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, this is our twelfth. This is our twelfth." I said, "You know, I'm not doing this again next year with you." You know, number one, not only did we get the wrong restaurant, but every five minutes you're asking me, "Is this the twelfth?" Yeah, it's the twelfth. Yeah, twelve years we've been married. So that sounds like nothing to you, right, Jeff? 
12. Well, how long have you been? I can been... remember when you got this school. Yeah. 12 years. Yeah. yeah. I remember when you got married. Yeah, but how many years have you been married to Pam now? Oh, 30 years. 30 years. Okay, fine. Yeah. I talked to my uh, old general manager at uh, Live 105, who an interview with him will be on tomorrow night. Uh, he uh, he's he celebrated just recently celebrated his thirtieth anniversary, and I do believe I was at his wedding when he got married. Oh, really? So you know we've known each other for at least thirty eight years, <laughs> so it's kind of our anniversary too. But anyway, right. that in, that interview, by the way, is on tomorrow, <clears throat> and we did two of them. So if you want to find out what radio is really like, you got to hear these interviews. So. This is also the general manager, the only guy who ever fired me twice, and I still talk to him. You know, so that's what <laughs> how good a guy he is. So, anyway, I uh, take that stuff personal. What take what personal? Firing. Oh yeah. Yeah, I not fired. Fired. You know, but re reconstruction of the you know our organization and blah 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 BS. Yeah, that kind. It's of only happened a couple times, and I've seen like some of those old bosses I had after and I still hate them <laughs> oh, and so. you still hate them okay all right well, no that uh, you know why not you have every right to but somehow it was just that Ed was so nice and good mm -hmm. and I respected him so much so when he fired me I kind of almost went <clears throat> I guess maybe I deserved it I don't know you know, yeah, but, I'm a nice guy at work. You were a nice guy at work. We we find out after I don't know what 38 years or something why <laughs> I got fired the first time. Ooh, don't don't tell us. I never knew. Don't I tell never us. Really knew. We yeah, want the suspense. And he says that's the one that he uh, he uh, uh, um, he calls the greatest mistake he ever made in his career was firing yep. me. So, yeah, you went yes. Uh, um, um, yeah, because he said it on, on right. the Monday show. Yeah. Right, right. He said it on the Monday show. So mm -hmm. anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun interview. You'll enjoy it tomorrow night, folks. Cool. But Can't wait. meanwhile, so I'm, I'm, I've been like really tired today, and I don't know why. I woke up. You ever wake up in the morning, and you had a full night's sleep, and you go, I think I need to sleep some more? Mm -hmm. You know? So I, I tried to go back to sleep, and I couldn't. But. You know, I went, wow, you know, it shouldn't be that bad. Anyway. It, yeah, it's the leukemia. Okay. Anyway. You'll be hearing that for the next two years, three years, four years, or uh, until I die of something else, obviously. We'll yeah. put on your tombstone, it wasn't the leukemia. It wasn't the <laughs> leukemia. No, on my, you know, what I want on my tombstone is, is uh, I told you, I, I told you I was sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so I'm, you know, but I, I just, I don't know, just really loopy today. And then we go out to dinner, you know, which, okay, I got it. You got it. Right, guys? You got to do it. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the anniversary. You got to do it. You don't want to do it. You'd rather stay home and just watch TV. But, you know, you do it because out of respect for her. So we go, and, and when we get there, it's not the place she wanted to take me and have me go out to dinner with her. Mm -hmm. So now How's she's, the, she says, I owe you a dinner now. I go, okay, fine. Yeah. How's the weather? Huh? How's the weather? <laughs> the weather here, rainy. Is the weather bringing you down or getting you tired? I, rainy, yeah. Maybe that, yeah. Yeah, you, you, sometimes the weather can really, especially when you're older, you know, you just yeah, we have like a week, a week of no sun and it, people go crazy in California. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. This whole week was supposed to be dry. So I had pest control people come in and spray the outside. And that was yesterday. Today it's raining in the Bay Area. Yeah. Why? Why do you want to do it when it was dry? It's because you. Well, because you, that way the little critters I have. I. I get spiders and ants, and that way it gives it the chemical time to kill them. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so I get it sprayed yesterday afternoon. Today I get up in the morning as I had appointments, and the ground's wet. And I'm like, what's going on? The whole forecast has changed for this week. Well, so you'll anyway. have to do it again. Yeah, it's 
California. Yeah. I will. I'll just do it sooner. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Well, you can afford it. You're, you're it's no big deal to me and you, Alex. We got a lot of money. Oh, yeah. We, well, I don't have a lot of money. Well, you got, you got, well, no, well I, not yet. Money. It's coming. Oh, not no, yet. Well. Not yet. Not until I, I got to talk to that person's estate and say, you can give it to me now. As, I mean, as, I might not be alive by as, the time you get done with this. Until I have it in my pocket, I don't believe I have it. Okay? okay. So it's not like I'm spending it yet. All right. I mean, I know who it is that hmm? you said so, but I hope you get it soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope so too. We're supposed to, supposedly, we're supposed to get a notification the end of this week, I was told. Good. So, Good. so we'll see. I don't know. You know. By the time we finally get the money, Marjorie's going to be so in such bad shape. She, um, you know, she's suddenly had been dizzy, and she has the same thing I've been having for the last two years, vertigo. And I keep telling her, "Shut up! I've had it for the last two years, and you never felt sorry for me. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't even believe I had anything." I kept telling There's you, I'm lightheaded. You know, and then I went to the neurologist, and he said that I had that vertigo. You know, uh, do you know what I found out about vertigo? They, they, I often thought it's it's because you have crystals in your in your ear canal, okay, yep. and they come loose. Yes. Well, Marjorie yeah. went to her ear doctor yesterday, and he said, "Well, no, they're not in your ear. The crystals, they get dislodged from where they are, which is in your brain." Oh no! Something's wrong with that. Well, she he said. Well, maybe she got it wrong, but yeah. he said they aren't in your ear. They your come ears. loose and go into your ear. No, no, no. You're you're they're in a little sack in your ear, and they're crystals, and they come out, and they move around in your ear. They don't go into your brain, but your brain interprets these little crystals somehow, and, and it turns it into vertigo. Yeah. So they have they have a um. If she saw a neurologist, they they have a some uh, uh, a thing where you turn your head this way for so no, long. No, no, she did that. They did that. They did that to her. Okay, I, I've got an appointment to have that done in a couple of weeks because I've developed vertigo too. Well, they can also and, tell if you have vertigo by looking at your eyes, and if they go twitching like this, you got really? vertigo. Yeah. No. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know, but all I know is when I have it, it's not fun. Yeah, but uh, you know, so there's over-the-counter medication that works pretty good for some people. It's an antihistamine called uh, Meclizine. Really? I think is, is the generic name? Yeah, it's cheap. I can go. I, I got a bottle of it. it. Didn't work for me, but oh well, if it didn't work for you, why would it well, work for me? Be, because I, I I take an anti-anxiety drug that works better, but it's a prescription. It's called Valium. And in, in emergency medicine, they're not going to give you meclizine. They're going to give you Valium. And I, and I already get it. And so my doctor said, skip the meclizine and take the Valium when you get really bad. Like, okay. Meclizine? I never heard of it. I'll, I'll go get the uh, the bottle and get, give you the exact spelling. <laughs> you don't have to do it. Just write uh, it we, to me. We believe you. <laughs> we believe you. Yeah. He just wants to show off his body. That's all. I want to show his, his 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 yeah his really cool bod. Yeah, we had we had Adrian, me, him, Phil, and uh, Steve Fox all in a booth together. <laughs> we all squeezed in there. Really? Oh, I got somebody recommended that I. He get doesn't. See, Alan, you don't look that big, big. You know. Thank man, you. you need to get some walks in you, man. I think you need to do some exercise. I think I don't look that big, big. Yeah, and you're in a white shirt too. You know? Well, it's actually tan. I know. Okay, so what's well, the Well, it's like problem? the old joke. How does he look thin? Fat. I look fat because I am fat. You're. Uh, you're I know, but you just just needs to get some exercise. Man. Why don't you and I get together and we'll go on walks? Yeah. If I live closer, I, I told you before I would. Yes. I'll, I'll drive down there a couple times a week. I mean, what, what are you, 15 minutes away? No, I don't want your white van parked in front of my house, please. Oh. <laughs> well, then lend me the DeLorean or whatever you got there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, a white van? 
He's you know the like Jeffrey Dahmer, Dahmer white van? That's what he has. <laughs> yes. Jeffrey Dahmer. He does. Devil. I have a yeah. white Ford Econoline. You know, 90% of vans are, are white. Yeah, well, but usually they have writing on the side like U-Haul or something, you know. Uh, mine mine has a number dispenser now, now taking number. So um, my cop friends tease me about it and say it's a pedophile van. <laughs> Same thing. I get it, Brian. They I, have more experience with that for sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why don't you just oh. get a regular car? Um, because I like vans. Why do you like yeah. vans? Yeah, well, because I like to go camping. Yeah, I have it. It's custom. Oh yeah, you look like the real outdoorsman. I I, I go just about every summer. Mm. Really? But you know, also, and it, I'm it's tall and in the back. It's got a bed. I'm not, and all. I'm tall, I'm not thin, but and Allen's his You're definitely shape, not thin. and and cars are not made for big people. That's why I have my Cadillac Daily Drivers, the big one, because I can fit in it easily. Man, I try try getting the Tesla. And that's why that's another reason I have a van. It's easy to get inside, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so mm. it's okay, also so what, you, you know, what are you drugs you selling now? I unlike you, I'm I'm still single. <laughs> And when I go to a bar and I find a girl, I don't have to, from San Francisco, they won't go to Fremont. So I can just take them in the van. <laughs> or if I get drunk, which doesn't happen anymore because they don't drink much. But Okay, so what I drugs do you want? What drugs uh, do you want? No, no good drugs, Brian. Sorry. Meclizine. Uh, M-E-C-L-I-Z-I-N-E. 25 milligrams. It's over the counter, drug stores or whatever. Um, you know. But you said it didn't work for you. It didn't work for me. Some people it doesn't work for. It's just like anything. It's a, it's an antihistamine. But they found out that it works horrible for antihistamines when it came out forty years ago. But works good for vertigo for some people. Hmm. It's temporary. It's like a band aid. You know, like a lot of drugs. Yeah, it, yeah, you know, yeah. But the it, thing it, is, it lasts I, six I, or eight hours, found, goes away, and if you don't take another one, you're dizzy. Again. I've often found that antihistamines always made me dizzy mm. and lightheaded. You know. No, this doesn't work very well as an antihistamine, but it did work. By good. the way, if you're listening to this program, folks, do not, not listen to his medical advice because he doesn't know what he's talking about. I do know what I'm talking about, except for I'm not a doctor. But yet you're giving out medical an advice. I'm, I'm just making a suggestion. These are suggestions. Hmm. You know, that's a possibility. She could try meclizine. Oh, okay. All you right. know, I wish I could get the... Oh, yeah, okay. I, can, I can see that. Okay. It's an over-the-counter. You know, yeah, I, I never... I don't... You know, when, when Jack used to call me Dr. Allen, I hated that. And I said, he said, why? And I said, well, because I'm not a doctor. He said, you know a lot about medicine. And you have degrees in biology and microbiology. I said that was forty years ago. Well, also, you know? I mean, I didn't like him calling you. Uh, uh, no, I, I heard that you didn't like it. I because, didn't like it either. No, because I told them, because, change it, because that would give people the idea that if you said somebody something, they should rely on it Absolutely. because you're a doctor. A lot, my, a lot of my friends take my advice and they get better, but you know could can i do heart bypass surgery no i have no idea upper lower chamber i don't know anything about it just keeps ticking yeah you know and, and you know i don't i don't know much about neurology i don't know how they can reconnect nerves they're microscopic they don't reconnect nerves once your huh? nerves are gone they're gone i've got neuropathy and my i, I don't my my uh, my nerves oh, are but gone they're, they're not a matter of re if you like severed a finger and went through a nerve mm -hmm. they could they could Put the nerve back together, and and then stitch the finger up somehow. I don't know. Ask went, a neurologist. I'm not. I went and got um, um, a uh, shot in my hand doing, the yeah. other day of of cortisone, which mm -hmm. I get about every six months. Uh, although it doesn't seem to be working mm -hmm. as well this time, but he went and he stuck me with the needle, and then shot all the juice in. And when he pulled it out, I bled like a stuck pig. I've never had that happen, you know. Are you but, on blood thinners? No, it's the leukemia. Anyway, 
<laughs> and now who's giving out the medical advice? Actually, I thought it would be the, it was the platelets, but the thing was, as soon as he put some some t- stuff on it and whatever, it immediately clotted up. So good, know, good, yeah, it's not mm. a problem. But I mean, I was yeah. I was going like a stuck pig, I, and I've had these cortisone shots before, and that's never happened. But that doesn't mean that he didn't hit like a, you know, you can see here. There's just a, like a little kind of see the dark area there yeah oh it's for your carpal tunnel no it's for the uh it's just the uh, uh, uh arthritis oh yeah it works good doesn't it when it works cortisone when it works it's a miracle yeah. drug. it can it can work in a day i found with i have, I have carpal tunnel and sometimes it takes a week or two to get it they, he, they, he, they always tell me wait a week before you decide whether it's working or not right. and it's working almost about 90 percent Okay, Man. so what do you want? And then I had this other one. This was the the big one, but this is going away finally. Oh um, yeah, yeah. See that one there. And the there phlebotomist loves to give these things, and I have the same thing. I my veins are hard to find sometimes, and they won't take it from this side of my arm where you can actually see my veins, even on the camera. Mm-hmm. This side is where they want to take it, and they leave a big old bruise. Yeah. Like, well, in, in my case, I uh, uh, they can't really go into the crook of my arm because they have a hard time finding a place. Uh-huh. So th- she went in there and she found something, and I had this black and blue mark that's lasted two weeks now, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I'm okay, you know. So of course, it, it's just... you select the uh, right or the left side. Hmm? Uh, you, uh, on the right, having some, my right hand. Yeah. You always go right. Well, no, I. You see, what I told them is, I don't have a lot of veins in the crook of my arm, and they're hard to find. And I said, here, go here. I've got veins you can see. Okay. And they go, well, that's kind of more painful. And I go, do it. I don't want you stabbing me twenty times trying to find a vein that you can't find. I'd rather you find one that hurts a little bit. You know. I'm going to take Jeff's advice. They, whenever I always put my left arm out and they draw it out of my left arm. That's what I'm this gonna, show has become, folks. It's I'm just try my right arm. arm. It's nothing. I'm going to try as, my right arm next time, Jeff. As one Shame as one me. person once described it, it's nothing but an organ recital now. You know, it's a bunch of old guys and blood on you know, complaining <laughs> about their medical problems. What are you putting? What are you showing me, uh, Jeff? Oh, can you see all this? blood, please? That's where I had. Oh, he's got. Oh, yeah, he, he got bruised, Ted Jeff. Yeah, I'm old. Yeah, my well, mother used to bruise like that. him. He's going away. That's like yeah. what happened to me here. You know, I mean, well, I can't show. Yeah. It's hard for me to. I mean, show. That, this one. Don't over here. Don't lie, Jeff. See you it? went to a right massage here. parlor. The women went nuts <laughs> over you, and you had to fight them off. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, just you know, you get older. That's what happens. You just start talking about stuff like this. You know, you go to have lunch with friends and you sit down and what's wrong with you? Well, I'll tell you. And here's what's wrong with me. I'm starting to enjoy it though now. Really. Uh, I'm starting to get in there a little younger. Uh, you've had your medical problems too, Tony. Yeah, well, Tony, Tony had yeah. prostate cancer. Right? Yeah, I'm trying to, I felt jealous. I, you and Phil were having all the fun. <laughs> what? I thought you on this thing. Brian kind of looks like he's about ready to get it soon. No, that lady, oh, that lady wait. on the Monday show, uh, Francine, Francine yeah. Zoom, yeah, she was talking about trigger finger, and I laughed because that's the it's only the second it, time I heard that's of that. Trigger I, finger, I, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was I I was waking up in the in the in the morning. I wake up and yeah, same thing. My finger would get stuck, and then all of a sudden it would pop really? out. And then I was like, "What the hell?" And then it started happening, and like worse. And I went to the doctor. And he, so I'm not trying to burst. Anybody he, else want to call up with a medical he, problem? Yeah. A Filipino, my, my doctor's Filipino, and he says, ah, that's trick of finger, trick of finger. <laughs> what the hell? And they gave you a shot of cortisone, right? <laughs> no, he said it was trigger finger. He said, yeah, just just work it out in the morning, and, you know, they, it's fine. Do, ever, said, trigger do, finger. My, do my impression. I'm of like, a- trigger finger, I'm like. This guy's making this shit up. And then uh, then she, she talked about it on Monday. I was shocked. So 
Oh my god, I never heard that before except for my doctor. I get the second finger over locking and they still what call it. What is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> you open Pandora's box. Okay. I, I was on the couch uh, listening to this. I said, I got a quality. Okay. <laughs> Trump, Trump is trying to sell Bibles now. Uh, Trump is selling uh, Bibles now. Uh, yeah, thank no, God. No, Let's no. get off of medical <laughs> stuff. But they, they <laughs> also <laughs> contain the Constitution. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, uh-huh. Jesus was a constitutionalist. Yeah, Holy <laughs> Week he's doing it too. <laughs> yeah, you know, Holy Week. When, when Trump first heard of the Constitution, uh-huh. he thought it was going to well, the. Well, Christ restaurant. would have approved of a real Christian like Donald Trump, wouldn't he? <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Somebody be. posted that on Facebook, and I thought the guy was joking, and I went back over there. No, he's selling my Bible. Said I he's thought he was selling joking too. anything he can lay his hands yeah. on. And it's it's hard to believe this Truth Social is going to be worth like four billion dollars. I'm tracking it in my Yahoo. I got to see it go down. It's more double that. Huh? It was four billion. What'd you say? Who said what? Wait a minute. So his share was was four billion. He the the company that he merged with this shell he company. Media, I think. Yeah. His share, his fifty percent or whatever. Is He's got sixty percent, I think. Four billion. Yeah, but you know something? Who says that it's going to stay that way? Well, that's so what he wants to call it early, Alex. He wants to dump it because he knows it's going to tank. No, but he can't dump it for six months. I know. Months. they got to make him hold it for six months. Yeah. That's why he wants to get rid of it because it's going to be... He's going to try and find a way, but the the Federal Trade Commission says he's got to hang on to it for six months. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Well, because you can't pump and dump. You know? Oh, he'd love to pump and dump. That's the story of his life. <laughs> No, you? Uh, yeah. So, you know. oh, I think I'm starting to think that the election's not going to be close. I really believe it. You mean that Trump's going to win? No, I think he's going to oh. get slaughtered, I think, really. Yeah. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that by the time the election gets here, all these polls, you know, mm. they, 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 they really don't know what they're talking about. And and I am I am so mad at uh, I I can't stand NBC anymore. Forget it. I can't stand them anymore. These guys Jack, went out yeah. and p- hired for three a two year contract three hundred thousand dollars a year. They hired the former head of the Republican Party. Uh, what what's you? her name? Rada. I can't remember. Huh? Uh, that was that was a quick stand. Wait, what, what, were you, what were you saying, Rada? Who? Rana something. Or yeah. And all I of a sudden, Ronald, Ronald all McDonald. the news, all the news moderators over at NBC started complaining that they had hired her, saying, this is, you don't hire her. For, for, for two years, four years, she's been yelling that the last election was a fraud, you know? And then she's kept going after, like, our network, and they said... You know, this is a horrible thing that you're doing this and that you're paying her this kind of money. So finally, after four days of all the network people from Rachel Maddow to Joe Scarborough to any one of name them, you know, they were all complaining about it. They finally fired her and she'd only worked one show. And that was (laughs) Meet the Press on Sunday. Oh, she did. Yeah. And uh, they got rid of her, but they're going to have to pay her. What are they going to pay? Then the whole six hundred thousand, six hundred million, six hundred thousand dollars. Holy shit! Really? Yeah. I didn't hear okay. that. Mm-hmm. And there's so no way out missing. of it because she didn't do anything wrong. So it's not. There's no right. cause here. The cause is they just want to get rid of her. Right. Now, I can see why they did it, or what the thinking behind it was, well, we need that kind of other voice here, okay, especially during an election year. But mm. they, they, this is the wrong person to go to, okay, because of just the way she was like Trump's little toady. Yeah, yeah. she's like Marjorie Taylor Greene then. Oh, I can't stand that woman either. Well, I forget. Get I the name who I right, hate. it's Marjorie Trash Can Green. She can't stand it. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, I mean, uh, the, and, and they're going around going, oh, gee, uh, this is horrible. And they're all yelling and screaming. Yet these <laughs> people have been sitting around. They're literally yeah. doing the same mistake they did in 2016. They won't shut up about Donald Trump. I tune into one of their shows, 
And yeah. from the hour, top of the hour, to about 30 minutes in, Trump, 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 Trump. Mm. He doesn't need to buy advertising, you know? He doesn't need right. to have money to run a, a campaign. All these nope. people are going to talk about him anyway. And, and why didn't they learn their lesson the first time? You just keep your mouth shut. Unless he does something that's really newsworthy, you don't talk about him. Period. Yeah. So, so somebody that's listening to the show right now, Who's that? that doesn't get on the show, but he's a friend of ours. Who? He gets he gets on Amy's show, and I won't mention his name here, but he says whenever Trump touches a Bible, an angel coughs up blood. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good too. So. That's a good line. That's a good line. Yeah. You mean there's somebody that doesn't call my show? Well, he doesn't like having his face and 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 you you record. Amy doesn't record other than voice, and he, for some reason, what do you mean I record? Call. Of course I record. How, how do right, I? Right, right. But it, but the nature of your he came on a couple times. But he, he, he doesn't like his opinions where people could put a face to it. I don't know why. It's just the way he is. Well, he doesn't have any... He listens to the show. And, Wayne. you know, and yeah. we talk about it on Amy's show. So. Wayne? But what is it? The after yeah. show for this show? Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's no. Like, it's not like you're a Trump rally. It's on Amy's show because there's no video portion. Other than, I mean, really? we, we see each other, but... It doesn't. It doesn't go it out. It doesn't go the, out as a video. Yeah. Right. We, we, and we're, we're for this some does. reason, he doesn't yeah. want to do that. So. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, I. I'm, that's amazing to me. You know. Um, so uh, what the hell? Um, anyway, uh, let me see here. What Would else? you be afraid to talk politics on another show? Which is your show? What'd you say? Like that person who didn't want to come on, like right now to talk, like Alan was saying, say if you were working in the Bay Area now and it's like a hot, like Trump is so polarizing. And if somebody asked you to come on their show, would you do it outside of your show? What do you mean? Would I go on somebody else's show? What yeah, like say they wanted to, they wanted to add, like remember you used to do um, uh, Tucker Carlson? I mean, you wouldn't be afraid to just like go on another show of the you know, to speak outside, like say your radio show, would you be open for that if if that times were sure, now? I don't mind. You know. That's right. Okay. Why are people so afraid then to t to have their opinion if they're against Trump or even if they're not? I can see if you're not. I mean, that's kind of crazy. Well, there are some people that don't want to have go on record. You know, they've got jobs. I mean, look, look at uh, look at Brian here. Brian kind of, uh, you hold back a little bit, don't you, Brian? Because you have a job to protect as well, besides being here? Uh, of course. Yeah. He just doesn't want his wife to be to hear it. But we know Brian hates He, he doesn't <laughs> have a wife, okay? Oh, no, she's a you. girlfriend, right, Brian? You sound like my brother. He's a wife <laughs> to be. <laughs> He's not, is, it, is she a wife to be? Is that a way of describing her? True. To be what? So Trump's trying to sell Bibles. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's going to sign one for me, too. Angels are bleeding like I wonder if the cover is going to be upside down. That'd be great. Oh, it would be. <laughs> and then he can sign the inside of an upside down Bible. Do you think Phil bought a Bible, Alan, or no? So there's well, something else. We, there's why something would we Bill buy a Bible? I know. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's my Trump. There's something else interesting that Tony and I were yapping about today. And I know it's not. Oh, Alex, yeah. Tell us. But, but you know, Alex, you, you've talked about it a Wait little bit. Wait a minute. Bit, you but... talk to Tony when you're not on this show? <laughs> I haven't heard from yeah, him you know, in a week. Sure Are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> you don't listen I, to Alex. Some things he's right about it isn't wrong. Okay, <laughs> my brother would agree, you, Alex. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah. No, but but uh, and this is this this you know it's a little bit about stuff going on, you know. But yeah. but the gam gambling and sports, I, I think, and, and and Vegas getting sports teams and the gambling that's going on now is just ruining mm -hmm. everything. I think five or ten years from now, it's going to be all ruined. There, there's so much bad stuff now that, you know, they're having a lot of questions with these, these bets. You can bet on Steph Curry to make, you know, so many three pointers every night. 
Mm-hmm. And so people are trying to get in to see if he's going to play and all this stuff so they can start making big bets. Not for Steph Curry, let's say, but for other players. But mm-hmm. now you have, like, you know, you have people that are gambling, these players, and they're trying to cover stuff up. And and now you have, you know, you have, you have a hockey team there. You have football. You have baseball coming there. And with the gambling stuff, I think it's just going to be out of control. Well, I think the gambling stuff is terrible. Yeah. Uh, I think this ability to gamble uh, uh, over the Internet is mm-hmm. terrible. Yeah. Because to begin with, there are people who are addicted. And don't mm-hmm. think that just because you put something on your goddamn ad saying, if you have a drink, you know, a, 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 a gambling problem, you should seek out help. Well, no, that doesn't work. You know, what works is you shouldn't be able to have people bet over the Internet. Period. That's it. And Instead of betting over the Internet, have them send money to GabNet. That's not the it, point. Oh, no, sorry. I mean, I was trying to make a point here. And I think the idea of, of, of uh, uh, that you can spend money uh, betting... On uh, at any time you want to over the internet. I mean, there are people probably spending hundreds, uh, tens of thousands of dollars. I think New York and has the most. And their families food. being deprived of money. You know, I mean, this is terrible. It's horrible. Anybody agree, disagree with me? I never thought it'd be legal to tell you the truth. I never thought you'd be able to do it no, legally. I didn't think so. In, New, in the state of New York, I was still shocked when they passed. Now it's almost every, but California, it's not legal. Yet. Yeah, I mean, if it's you want, like if, you, if you if you want to if you want to bet, you got to uh, call a book. Try, try, try the stock market. It's the biggest betting mm. deal in the business. You know, all the doctors, huh? The dog. Mm. The, the, the doctors. Connie thing is interesting, Brian. They, they, they have yeah. the best player in baseball right now. Did you hear this, Alex? The yeah. best player in baseball right now, and he's been losing yeah. millions of dollars from gambling, and then he blamed it on his interpreter. Really? Are they are they, oh, are yeah. they are they establishing that he probably was doing the gambling himself? That's well, he what changed they, the story. Yeah, but he changed the story at, from the beginning, and then, you know, it's like, oh, so your translator? How does your translator have uh, access to your bank accounts? You know, these guys are saying, how can, your wife can't even get into your bank account without, you know. Recognizing I mean, the yeah, wire, yeah. find the person. So there are they saying yeah. now that he may have actually been betting? Well that, that or is this just conjecture? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't know what story is true because first he said he was trying to bail out his interpreter for gambling, and now they're saying, Oh, he stole from me. And he lied. Yeah. Hmm. And the feds were watching this guy. That's how they got him. The feds next you're gonna you, you, next you're gonna tell me that boat didn't hit know. the bridge. I mean, I think he vetted. That's just me. Because you know why, Alex? You, how, you know how hard it is to wire $500,000 from your bank account? He has to have power of attorney then to do that, probably. You can't just walk into well, a bank know. and... I don't know. It, it, it did sound kind of phony to me, because my question is, how did he have access to this That's what I'm saying. Funds? How do you have that much access? You can't just go to a bank and say, I want to wire half a million. And he did it eight times. He had to know. You know what I think it is? Like Brian said... I think when he, he, the original story was he bailed out his friend. He had to spin that because if they would have stayed with that, well, they're going to know the truth anyway because the feds have their bookie. They're going to pinch the bookie. The bookie knows everything that was bet on. The question is, he spins it, Brian, because you know why, Alex? It's illegal to, so if you paid the bets off, the feds are going to say you still broke the law because it went to the bookie on the corner, which is all dirty money anyway. So they got to suspend the baseball for that alone. This kind the of right makes thing to what, do would have been don't bail him out, go to the cops. Who was the baseball player years ago got dumped for this like crazy? Pete Rose. Pete Rose. It makes yeah. him look like a baby. Because Rose yeah. actually, yeah. Well, this when you well Rose they said when it was Barchi Barchi Amati was a better GM. This guy who's the GM for uh, the commissioner for baseball, I don't trust him at all because he's in bed with the gambling places. Wow. Mm-hmm. He's trying to cover this up to co- for the integrity of the game. Well, he knows the feds are not going to go for this. Well, the big money now for these teams and for baseball in general happens to be the gambling, doesn't it? I oh, mean, yeah. they work twenty four seven, nonstop commercials, and then you know, remember we talked about this during COVID. 
COVID there, yeah. they tried to get sports up so quickly as because of all the gambling. Well, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In San Francisco, you actually have a radio station that's based entirely on betting. It's insane to see a sports betting. That's all they talk about. Oh, yeah, Kate, yeah, I, and they will, and they they make their they make their little wages. You know, like every week, like for football, every week they talk about who they're picking, and they're using point systems. They're not saying the 49ers are going to beat these guys. It's like, uh, no, I'm going to take the 49ers and give up seven points. You know, yeah. and where are they getting the seven that's points from? Yeah. They're getting it from Vegas. You know, isn't that called the yeah. Greek used to do check boxes because they didn't want them to say it on TV. Yeah. Does anybody and, here bet at all? No. I, mean, I, I, I bet a little bit, but I don't bet a lot. Do you bet, Charlie? Beg your pardon? Do no, you? I don't bet at all. I do not gamble. Because I used to go to Vegas, but I never bet anything big like this. Yes, uh, Jeff? I don't care. But when I worked in the city, we had a guy right next to me. And he was the gambling guy. Okay. Everybody would come in. He was, a, he was a bookie. He was a bookie. He was a bookie. He was running numbers. That's what they used to call it. He yeah. played the numbers all yeah. oh, day. That was his job. And I got to tell you, that's what he really did all day long in the office. Yeah. And, and you know, the money didn't go to, to his house. It got, let's say, Italian money. <laughs> They come it, 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 the Italians used to come pick up the money. Something yeah. like, give it to the well, wife. That's, that's the way it was. Yeah, I'm all joking. Are you everything. telling me the uh, the Italians yeah. were involved in organized crime? Oh my God! How <laughs> racist can you be? I got the Godfather poster right there. <laughs> How racist can you possibly it's all right, be? It's probably true. I would imagine. We right? all know there hasn't been a single Italian that was involved <laughs> in organized crime. And I'll go on record as saying that. <laughs> Me too. I, I want to live a little longer. Maybe you can say That's anything right, else will get me you killed. Tell it to yeah, yeah, you right. tell it to oh boy! <laughs> I love yeah, I just that, that Jeff played that away. well with a straight face when you were yeah. saying that, Alex. <laughs> no. Like he, like, like, like. Oh, really? You know? Yeah. yeah I think it's just going to ruin sports. So <laughs> something's going to, you know, with Otani, and then. Yeah. If something else comes up and something else comes up, people are going to start losing faith that these games are real, you know? Well, did you hear the news? I'm not going to mention the player. The, there's an NBA player that's under investigation. They're saying that a ton of money went into Vegas on prop bets or rebounds or something, yeah, and he pulled so himself from the game. Yeah, so now they're trying to do an investigation into that. That's active. Yeah. So, so what that is is prop bets. So that player, they'll say that he's going to have, you know, so many points or whatever that is. As a player, a prop bet, it can be slam dunks, it can be three pointers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he can bet a whole bunch of money saying that he's going to have the under on that. And then he pulled himself out from the game. Yeah, he said oh, he I got, got hit in the eye. Did you see that? And I think, he gets oh. that under and he gets his payout. I, mean, this I, I don't today. understand any of this. Okay. All right, get ready for this, Alex? It's like Alex is going to say F you. Exactly. <laughs> 20, yeah. 20 times in this. I got him on the me and Brian, have him on the 20. And you and you bet under, and then you pull yourself from the show halfway through, and yeah, you go. Ten. Now you, you get your payout. Cold, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's this just, is good. I'm telling you, you're gonna have a big. You're gonna have a big. Uh, you know, let me ask Charlie. This Charlie in Dallas Stadium. Do they have the? Uh, do they have DraftKings in the stadium that they can bet active? I don't know. I haven't been since they uh, started allowing betting in. Because I know they should. So the Alex, some of these stadiums actually have the ads in the stadium oh, yeah. for the betting purposes. Yeah, yeah but do that, they? Uh, that's that's, that's, that's how it's insane. But, but do they allow the betting to go on on premises? However, yeah, you could do it with your phone right at the game. Well, of it's course, you can yeah. use your phone. Yes, you're right. But they should be able to shut you down at the game if they really wanted to. Like, what? hey, listen, there's no betting if you're inside the state. Because there's an app there on the app. They know where you are. Like, if I flew out to California to visit them, mm -hmm. I cannot place any bets because I'm out of my time. I'm out of the no, But I think, they, I think the only thing they know is your general vicinity, not yeah, whether you're you at the, state. the stadium or not. Well, they could zero in on it, but yeah. No, they, it, it's a little harder to do that. But they would probably know the state. Yeah, well, we have an alert on Tony when he enters the state. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not the airport. Who's coming to get me? Nobody. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, I'll take the tax. Yeah, I don't. I never gambled 
basically. I mean, I, yeah, I go to a casino and bet a couple of bucks here. Yeah, and you there. liked the casino, I thought, when you went to Vegas, right, Alex? Did you do that? I, I, you... I, I'm very. I, I would go and play a slot machine for a couple of okay, minutes. That's and, what I would do. I didn't if like I didn't get a hit on it, I just stop. You yeah. know, because I don't like to lose, and the reason me I don't too, like I, I to feel lose, bad when I lose money. It, so you see, lose. if you're a true gambler, whether you win or lose, you get the thrill. Okay, uh, I don't get a thrill out of losing. No, nope. you know, mm -hmm. so uh, there's no reason for me to gamble because the chances are you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. I mean, come so on, you against you. What? The odds are against you because the whole purpose of them allowing you to gamble so they can make money. Well, my question is, why do people bet to begin with if they know the odds are against them? That's what I never understood. Is it the rush probably? probably if it were a 50-50 chance you'd win, okay. Now, the one that's really crazy is the lottery, although I oh, have to admit. I still put my mom's number to pick three. Occasionally, oh, yeah. we'll buy some tickets. What the hell? Things yeah. up to a billion and a half dollars. Yeah, the other night it was Powerball. Couldn't yeah. hurt, <laughs> right? You know, but then we do twenty bucks. You know, big deal. Um, but I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's not it's it's not something that that you have a good chance of winning. Okay, the odds are really against you. You know, I remember we used to like doing that. I used to do it here, Alex. We used to go to bingo hall. I used to take it to the bingo. And it was nice playing bingo. I mean, they would get, you know, she worked like two boards, but some of those old people, they were working like five, six boards. Oh, I, I know. Like, ones I, know I, went to, I went to a place once where they were doing bingo, and there were people that were like 20 boards. Yeah, yeah and there were these old people, bing, 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 bing. I'm like, holy, look at this lady go. I said, yeah. they loved it. Yeah, and they would, you know, they always won some, and it was like they had, you know, it was a night out for them. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I mean, bingo's a slow game. Yeah, my mother fast. liked it because if she missed the number, I used to put it on the board for her because sometimes she couldn't see it. So I'd be like, Ma, you missed 12, and then I'd put it on for her. All right, make sure we win. Ma, you know, when you, you went to out. play bingo with your mother? Yeah, because I had to work the board with She was legally blind in one eye. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, I used to have to put the Now I've heard everything. Yep. <laughs> it was only on the avenue, really, so it, was only, it wasn't far. I used to take her up there. Tony, sounds like you really have a... You, your life was rich and full while your mother I was actually alive. miss it so much. I was like, I miss mom, I said. My brother says the same thing you do. He says, you, you, I miss her. Though, Did you bit. ever come close to getting married? No. A Who's dog doesn't me? count. Yes, yes. <laughs> Dogs don't count. That's true. Oh, but you know what, Alex? I was, I was telling Phil, I may adopt another dog because I never had a male puppy. And I'm walking this Kansas, and I'm... He's so, he's so different from the females. Like he'll he'll listen to you a little. You know more. why he's different than the females? Why is that? He's got balls, <laughs> right? And you know, he's so like I, I, he's so good. I mean, he's. I mean, I love my female dogs, but he's he's just different. By the way, you know? if you've just just joined in, folks, and you're wondering what's happening, you're not awesome. alone. Go <laughs> ahead. You're in the wrong place. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, you know, in California, when Tony hits the bay, gets off the plane in the Bay Area, some of our cell phones start lighting up and flashing. <laughs> yeah, hide. <laughs> it was only there once, and I, lo I loved your city, San Francisco. It was nice. You'd love it now. You can walk in shit. Is it that bad? I mean, I was looking at that's some, what I've heard. I, an old documentary on. They showed the friend. I watched an old documentary. They were showing the Francis Hotel or the Drake. They were showing like the different hotels. And Sir Francis city. Drake Hotel. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The Sir Francis Hotel and the Drake Hotel. No, it's the Sir Francis Drake Hotel. Okay. Yeah, give him a break. Consider where he's from, Queens. Yeah. True. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's the Sir Francis Drake Hotel. And there's the St. Francis Hotel. It was showing the area. It looked nice. Like and you know what happened in the St. Francis Hotel? What's that? You don't know? Was that when the one you guys were telling me with Shecky said, was that Fatty Arbuckle? Yep. No? Yep. I remember him telling me that story. That was it then. Mm -hmm. I was watching the documentary. I wasn't sure if I was remembering it right. You're right then. Yes. Yes. What Was that what year? Was, was that the 30s or 40s, Alex? Do you remember? I don't know. God, I... I, what, what do you mean? Do you remember? I wasn't alive at the time. I know you were, but I, mean, I know you were pretty good with the. I, mean, I know, I know, I'm old, but I wasn't alive no, at the time. 
Yeah, I was watching. I thought that was Fatty Arbuckle when he used to tell you. I, I think, think Fatty that Arbuckle, that had to be in the silent era, actually. When okay, that happened. That. I think it was about 1927. Uh, okay. Echo? Echo. What year did Fatty Arbuckle have his party at the St. Francis Hotel? It looked like a really nice place. The party that Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle had at the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco occurred on September 5th, 1921. 1921? Wow. Yeah, we were close. God, you were only two. Were you shut the hell up? (laughs) According to Tony. (laughs) My mother wasn't even alive. Actually, he wasn't even at the party. He wasn't then, right? No. He showed up. He showed up later on, but not when this woman was uh, uh, dying. Oh. And what had happened was that she supposedly had a ruptured, uh, um, uh, I don't know, uterus or something. I don't know, something, but burst. And to, uh, they thought that she was suffering from just being drunk or something. And they threw in a tub full of ice, and the ice made it really burst. Oh really? Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. And Man, that's worse. that's what happened to her. Um, I used to know her name. What was it? Oh God, it was a great name too. But she was she was a hooker, you know. And so she had certain physical problems. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know that, that that's one of the most misunderstood stories of all time. Yep. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of legends in Hollywood, like that William Randolph Hearst uh, shot a guy. On his boat, because he thought he was having, because he thought it was Charlie Chaplin. Really? Yeah, and he thought Charlie Chaplin was having sex with Marion Davies. Is that true or no? Uh, I think she may have been having sex with Char- Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. yeah, but she loved the old man, so you know, it wasn't <laughs> like she didn't love uh, Hearst. But you know, Hearst was kind of an old guy, and I'm sure. He wasn't able to fully satisfy her needs, as it were. Yeah, they didn't have Viagra back then. No, they Ooh, they didn't. I think if you did, you'd be rich. Mm-hmm. Who needs? Uh, I got pills. <laughs> this is the best business ever. Yeah, but uh, and everybody always used to treat Marion Davies like she was some kind of you know chippy who was out for her money. But they don't remember the fact that when Hearst went bankrupt during the 29 crash, mm. the person who bailed him out was Marion Davy. She gave him a oh, million hmm. dollars to save the Hearst Corporation. Oh, wow. So she wasn't a chippy, okay? No. She, oh, I mean, back then, my God. Eh, I love all those stories about Hollywood. I like the old, yeah, I like the... They're great. I, love, I was watching a documentary on that, so I was like... Oops. Yeah. In fact, Peter Bogdanovich did a film called The Cat's Meow, which was about that boat trip. And, you know, in the beginning of it says, some legends in Hollywood are true and some just refuse to die. You know, and uh, this is one of them. And it was an interesting, uh, good film, good film. Anyway, we've got about five minutes left here. Anything anybody want to talk about? Any? Well... Uh, yeah, <laughs> what? Uh, Did we ever talk about the boat that ran into the bridge in Baltimore or whatever? Well, I made a joke about it earlier, which was, well, I suppose, tasteless. Didn't didn't yeah. another barge hit that bridge like twenty years ago or something like that? Well, certainly it wasn't a barge as big as this one. Oh, okay. All right, this thing was uh, just huge. Oh, right for the yeah, the video that was captured, that thing is. Well, there were supposedly some technical problems with the boat, and he couldn't steer the thing right. And well, you right. can see the lights going on and off, like the power was going in and out. There's right. videos on YouTube; you can watch it. You can watch yeah. the whole bridge come down and everything. Yeah, I most think, of those boats are driven by an electric power generator or gas power generator. I think when this all comes out and it's all mm. investigated, nobody's going to be to blame. You know, mm. it's just going to be a freak accident. Yeah. You know. It took out that uh, that uh, that particular bridge. Francis yeah, Scott King. It happened at one thirty in the morning instead of you know rush hour. Yeah. Yes, a lot of people could have been killed if that was rush hour. <laughs> um, but um, Francis Scott <laughs> Key Bridge. Yeah. 
there there was a I don't know if it's real. There was a meme, and it was the report about that. And they're saying the really bad thing is that bridge, since it came down, it blocked all that 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 um, river. And I don't know if it's true, but and then they started saying, and the bad thing is Amazon is on the other side of that, and they couldn't get packages out. <laughs> so, <laughs> So they're saying like, oh yeah, great. People's priorities, right? They're worried about Amazon. <laughs> Their next day packages. Hey, I gotta have my coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, you know. But it, it uh, that was quite a story. But the thing is, again, it's another one of those stories. Do we have to hear about it every single hour of every day? Yeah, yeah, but it's, it was cool to see, like Charlie's saying, it's cool to see the video because, you know, with cameras yeah. everywhere nowadays, there's a yeah. lot of, I mean, you see all these animals. That get, I'm on, I'm on like a monkey one and I'm on like a raccoon one. These guys raise these raccoons from like, like babies and they have like little hands and stuff. <laughs> yes, I want a raccoon. Wait somewhere. a minute, wait a minute. Raccoons? Yes. If you yeah. go on Instagram and you say like raccoons, there's like five or six different pages and all they are are raccoons. And then there's one with monkeys and these little, these no hair monkeys, they walk in around, they look like humans. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. You know. Well, Easter's coming up. Oh yeah. Easter Sunday, yeah. Easter Sunday. Is it this Sunday? This yeah. Sunday. See, I happen to be a Jew. <laughs> and I don't know. I didn't know that either. Huh. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. See, you're a Jew too. Thanks. Any other yeah. Jews here? Oh yeah, Jeff. Did you know this was uh, this was Easter this Sunday? Yes, I do. What kind of a Jew are you? He's married <laughs> to a Gentile. <laughs> to a Gentile. <laughs> oh yeah, he's married to a Gentile. So it's a, <laughs> yeah. my wife knows. I like that name. I like that term Gentile. <laughs> that is funny the way it sounds. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but I, it's funny. It's yeah. funny. <laughs> Part of the English language, Tony. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it was a terrible situation, you know, and it was horrible that it, it was such a freak incident. Mm. Yeah. You know, watching the, the traffic crossing that bridge at night. Yes. The yeah, you can see worker, the cars going by. Yeah. And they had little time. The, the, the captain of the, of the barge warned the authorities and had no idea that the bridge was going to collapse, but that they were going to hit one yeah. of the pillars. And they started stopping traffic, but it was too late for some of the people. Yeah, the but workers. also, also, if you will look at it, um, the whole bridge didn't go down. You know, there was a certain center part of it that went down. Yeah. Other, either side of it. The suspension part, yeah. Yeah, the suspension part. Is what fell, um, but right. you know it was a terrible accident. It was horrible. But do we have to see it every hour on the hour? You know? that and, the, and the reason, you know, if there was it's no if there was no video of that, they just report it, and then they'd be on to other stuff. But because they have video of it, they show it over and over, over, and, over, and, over, and, over and over and over again. Yeah. And and quite frankly, I think that's kind of tasteless. Mm -hmm. I, I don't consider that news. Do you? you Not know? after the first right. day. Yeah. Give yeah. everybody a chance to hear about it and yeah. move on. Yeah, but they don't know how to do that because they got this 24-7 news, and they don't have enough news to go around. So they keep <clears throat> flogging the same dead horses over and over and over again, and that's one of the things that might get Donald Trump reelected. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's because they don't Remember, know Remember, we used up. to listen to the news what was it? 20 minutes? Yeah. An hour? We sit the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, before the internet, huh? Remember when they just only had news on the hour? That was yeah. that was okay by me. All right. A couple hours a day. And I, I once asked somebody, why do we run news on the hour? Because this hour really isn't that much different than the last hour and isn't that much different than the hour before it. And I was told because people want to know nothing new has happened. But when you got these different, you have different listeners every hour. But what, now that you've got these twenty four seven news cycles, that doesn't count. You know, they should shut up at some point. You know, so and on your phone and alerts on your phone and everything else now. Exactly. 
Hey, listen, thank you very much, Jeff, for having joined us tonight. We really appreciate it. Are you back home in Connecticut? Not yet, but leaving on Sunday. Oh, you're leaving on wow. Sunday. Traveling yeah. on Easter. What kind of Jew are you? Light <laughs> <laughs> traffic. We're traveling. Oh, okay. <laughs> You have and, to stop by to see some people. And thanks to Charlie, by the way, for being here this evening. I appreciate it uh, from you. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Brian Neary, thank you for being here, as well as Alan W. What's the W stand for? Yeah, you asked me that last week. White van. Yeah, white van. That's it. <laughs> oh, and, uh, and, and finally, of course, uh, Tony, thank you for joining us. And making us all feel a little more intelligent than we are. <laughs> Sorry. No, it was good. It was good. I think I'm going to add a B. Everybody, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel for now. And thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow, same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, uh, uh, Amy is next, and she's uh, going to take your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>